Okay, good day everyone and welcome to another video lecture. Okay, so alive alive tayo. Let's have the music. Okay. okay, anyway, welcome to our discussion on saving, investment, and the financial system. So in this chapter, we'll tackle on the types of financial institution in the U.S. economy. Okay, but applicable naman sa atin and their function. What are the three kinds of saving? Um, what are the difference between saving and investment? And how does the financial system coordinate saving and investment? And how do government policies affect saving, investment, and interest rates? So, we'll answer these questions. So, before we start, imagine that you've just recently um, got your license to practice this as an accountant you're now a certified public accountant and then you decided to put up a business let's say you would want a to put up an accounting firm diba bongga now aside from the office kailangan mo din ng office desk office chair file cabinet and most importantly computers diba mahirap naman accountant ka pero wala kang computer mo na oh, mahirap so now, um, the question now is, um, paano mo ipon yung mga kailangan mo, di ba? Those computers, um, chairs, desks, it forms part of your capital. How would you fund your capital? It can be that you have your savings. But let's say, not enough ang yung saving because you've just recently passed a board exam. No? Hindi pa ganun kalaki ang saving mo. But you really want to put up an accounting firm. Kasi magaling ka. Diba? So, um, it can be no, your savings. Or it can be that you can borrow money from your parent, your rich relative, or your friends. Uh, maybe you put up an agreement na if you invest in my company, I'll have you. No? I'll issue a share to you. Or it can be that you borrow money from institution, let's say, co-op, um, or banks. Diba? But in essence, um, you are using someone else's saving to put up your investment. Okay? And as I've mentioned, we have institution, financial institution. And they have this group of institution which help match the saving of one person with the investment of another. Okay, and we call that the financial system. Okay, so um, this institution, okay, merong institution na directly, no, take note of the word directly, provide funds to borrowers. Okay, and we call that financial markets. And it usually comprises of these two, the bond market and the stock market. Okay, so anong difference nila? Ang bond market, where you issue, you issue bond, um, you issue a certificate of indebtedness. Para ka nang utang, no? meron kang obligation to pay. And in bond, it states the interest rate, the date of maturity. Okay, so when a company, let's say, the dito, nag-expand sila. Wala pa kayo nag-start, no? Pero nag-expand agad. So, ganun sila kagrasil. No, but for the sake of our example, let's say they want to expand more because they want to provide better service to the nation. So, nag-expand si dito. And one way is they can issue bond. No? Pautang sila. Pa, um, mangutang sila sa mga tao. And in return, yung interest rate ang, ano, ang makukuha ng inuutangan nila. So, ganun ang bond. Ang concept ng bond. With the stock market, a stock is a claim to partial ownership of the firm. So, it is stock. When you issue a stock, it's like you're issuing a share, to a share of ownership okay, to an individual. So, when you buy stocks, you have partial ownership. So, ganun ang difference nila. Bond is like an IOU. No, I owe you something. And stock is um, partial ownership. 
So aside from the financial market, we also have the financial intermediaries, um, financial institution in which savers can indirectly provide funds to the borrowers indirectly. And one notable example are the banks. Ang banks, nag-save ka ba, sa, sa bank, um, they will use this to finance uh, to finance the borrowers. And another way is the mutual funds in which institution sell shares to the public and use the proceeds to buy portfolios of stocks and bonds. I think one example of a mutual fund is the MP2 sa pag-ibig. Kung familiar kayo with pag-ibig, no? Diba? It's a government institution which finances housing. The pag-ibig. Meron silang MP2. I think, kung tama ako, ang um, interest rate when you save in MP2 is 8% annually. So, diba? Malaki na siya. Better than the regular saving account. Pero, pero I think ang um, MP2 meron silang holding period. Hindi mo agad mo pull out. And like the regular saving na anytime p- pwede mo pull out ang investment. So, but it's 8% annual interest rate. Diba? Okay na din. No? Malaki-laki na din ang 8%. As opposed to the regular saving, I think 0.25% annual. Diba mo siya na parang wala? Wala na lang. <laughs> okay. Pero depende kasi, no? If, well, if it's it for an emergency fund, might as well go for a regular savings account. Anyway, there are different kinds of saving. No? Private saving and the public saving. Private saving is the portion of the household income that is not used for consumption or paying taxes. So it's presented through this, no? Y minus T minus C. Y is the income minus the taxes minus your consumption. So that is your private saving. Well, public saving, it's the tax revenue less the government's spending. No? So how does the government earn? It's through taxes. So tax minus the government spending. That is the public saving. P minus G. So the national saving, when we're talking about national saving, it comprises of both the private saving and the public saving. So, ano mangyayari sa formula? Diba? So, kung si private saving is Y minus income minus stock minus consumption plus in addition to the public saving which is tax minus the government spending, ang, ano mangyayari kay tax? Mawala si tax. So, uh, national saving, the formula for national saving now would be income minus consumption minus government spending. Okay? So, it's the national saving or the portion of the national income that is not used for consumption or government purchases. So, um, if you can recall um, the GDP, diba, right? The GDP is the total income in an economy plus the total expenditure to produce um, goods and services. Yun ang GDP, right? So, why here is the GDP? GDP would be equal to consumption plus investment plus government spending. And we have here the NX or the what we call as the net export. But in this chapter, okay, to simplify everything, tanggalin natin si NX. We focus on the closed economy case. Ano to yung closed economy case? Opposite ng open economy case. Opposite ng siya open. Pero ano ba yun? Uh, Close economy case, um, let's say that wala tayong trading, no? We don't interact with other countries. Trade lang tayo within the country. So, tanggalin natin sa net export. So, what will happen now to GDP? It would become consumption plus investment plus government spending. And if you solve for I, for investment, ano mangyayari? No? In a close economy case, investment would be equal to the GDP minus consumption minus government spending. And if you can recall our formula for national saving, diba? it's Y minus C minus G. Pareha sila. So, anong meaning? So, in a closed economy, saving and investment is equal. So, yun lang yun. So, let's talk about budget deficits and surpluses. Budget surplus, no excess. No? Madali namang intindihin. 
an excess of the tax revenue over government spending. So, tax minus government spending, ang sobra-sobra, uh, we have a positive public saving. But what would happen? It can occur that there will be deficit or a shortfall of tax revenue from government spending. So, if the government spending exceeds the tax, what would happen to the public saving? Di ba mag-negative? Diba? So, let's have an example. We have here calculation. Um, suppose the GDP would be 10 trillion no, in dollars pa dyan, no? So, lang laki. And the consumption is equals to 6.5 trillion. The government spends 2 trillion. And then, um, the budget deficit is 300 billion. No? May deficit na 300 billion. So, the question now is find public saving, taxes, private saving, national saving, and investment. So we have here the answers na. Okay, so given naman si GDP, consumption, government spending, and then the formula for um, the budget deficit is diba, government spending minus tax, yung G minus T. So it's at um, 300 billion. So computing for the public saving, we have our formula tax minus government spending. So public saving, negative. We have our taxes. Yeah. How do we compute for taxes? We have here our budget deficit. No? So kung we have a government spending of 2.0 minus, minus our deficit, which is 0.3, we can compute for our taxes, which is 1.7. Private saving. We have GDP, na compute natin si taxes. Meron tayong given na consumption. So, madali na lang i-compute. National saving. Okay? okay, so, income minus consumption minus the government spending. Compute. And as you can recall, investment saving in a close economy is equal. So, we have 1.5. So, next, um, how a tax cut affects saving. Ano ba tong tax cut? Diba? Ang tax cut is reduction to the taxpayer's money um, which goes to the government revenues. Diba? Yun ang tax cut. So, um, it says here in the problem, we use the numbers. Okay? We, have, we use the given um, from the preceding exercise and suppose that the government cuts taxes by 200 billion. So, in each of the following two scenarios, determines what happened to the public saving, private sa saving, national saving, and investment. So we have here two scenarios now. One is, diba, we have tax cut. Ang gawin daw ni consumer, it's because nag-reduce ang babayarin niya to government spending. Ang gagawin daw per scenario ni consumer is to save all proceeds of the tax cut. And second scenario is save niya ang one-fourth of the tax cut and then spend the three-fourth. Okay, so what would happen to public saving, private saving, national saving, and investment? So, given naman. Okay, meron na tayong answers. So, in both scenarios, public saving falls by 200 billion and the budget deficit rises from 300 billion to 500 billion. So, if ang, if the consumer daw okay, saves 200 billion, national saving is unchanged, and so is the investment. Bakit? Bakit, ma'am? Okay, so let's look at the formula. Okay. National saving. <laughs> I'm sorry. National saving. No? So, tax cut. Okay? At ang gawin daw ni consumer saves 100% of the tax cut. If you look at national saving, it remains the same. National saving and investment would remain the same. It's because when you look at the formula, an income remains the same, ang consumption niya, remains the same, and the government spending remains the same. Because the same lang niya yung tax cut, no? yung money na imbes pambayad ng tax, the same lang niya. So, 
walang mangyayari to do national saving. Okay. So, if he saves 50 billion and spends 150 billion, okay, one part of the tax cut, save niya, three part spend niya, okay, what would happen to the national saving and investment? Okay. So, let's look at the formula again. So, 150 billion, am I right? 150 billion ang dispend niya. What would happen to national budget? Diba? So, when you look at the formula for consumption, no, minus consumption, meaning, no, um, with an additional of 150 billion, no, magbaba si national saving. Diba? When you look at it, na um, kung gisave niya lang, walang mangyayari to national saving. Pero kung gispend niya, magbaba si national saving. Ano ba talaga? <laughs> so, yun lang yun. Okay. So, let's look at the other, no? the public saving. No? Let's look at public saving. Anong mangyayari kay public saving? Public saving. Public saving is tax minus government spending. So, um, it's because tax cut tayo, no? Nagbaba tayo ng 200 billion, your tax cut. False. That's why. Because the formula for public saving is tax minus government spending. Okay? So, kung magbaba, Ang si tax, magbaba din sa public saving. Okay. Then, budget deficit. Okay. What would happen to budget deficit? Ano bang formula ni budget deficit? Hmm. Ah, ito si budget deficit. Um, Mag-rise si budget deficit. Okay. When there is a tax cut. Because the government spending, let's say it's still the same. But ang deduction niya is magbaba. So, what would happen? It will rise. No? Tama. It will go from 300 billion to 500 billion. So, I hope we'll clear. So, here we have discussion that you answer it yourself. No? There are two scenarios. No? Um, consumer save both proceeds. Or number two, consumer save one part of the tax cut and spend the other three part. Which do you think is more realistic? Diba? And why? what is the implication? Why do we need to ask these questions? So you answer this through yourself. Baka maglabas kay formative assessment. Okay. Um, the meaning of saving and investment. Private saving, as we had mentioned, is the income remaining after the household pay their taxes and pay for consumption. So what do households do with saving? Diba? Maraming ways, no? Maraming ways. They can either um, buy bonds or equities. So, diba? When a company, when a company issues, issues um, stocks, they call it uh, equity finance, right? They call it equity finance when companies issue stock. Uh, when they issue um, bonds, they call it debt finance. Okay. So, pede. Um, household can also buy certificate of deposit at the bank or they could buy shares of mutual funds or they just could just accumulate saving or check checking. So, pede, no, to the private sa saving. But ano bang kaibahan ni saving and investment? Yun ang question natin. Saving uh, investment, okay. Is defined as the purchase of new capital. When we say investment, diba, you're using it to purchase, let's say, new equipment, new factories, no, new, uh, in, let's say, in the household case, no, to buy a new home. These are investment. So in essence, okay, sanay tayo, diba? when we purchase stocks, we call that investment. No? But in economy, in economics, Investment is not the purchase of stocks and bonds. Magkaiba sila. In economics lang naman. Okay. And 
let's look at um, the market of loanable funds. No? Itong mga itong funds na we'll be tackling about the loanable funds. So, economists, they love to, as I mentioned <laughs> from our previous lecture, they like to present it through model. Ganon ang mga economists. And we have the supply and demand model of the financial system. To help us understand how financial system coordinates saving and investment and how could government policies and other factors affect saving, investment, and the interest rate. Okay. So, for the sake of illustration, let's say in a simple way, no, para dali natin magras ang concept, let's have only one financial market in which all savers deposit their saving in this market and all borrowers take out loans from this market. And there is only one interest rate which is um, used both in saving and borrowing. Okay, So, ang interest rate presented here, both na used for saving and for borrowing. So, um, take note, when we look at um, the slope of the supply curve, um, the supply of the loanable funds comes from saving. Okay, you need to take note of that. Comes from saving. Ano to mga saving na to? It can be that it come from the household with extra income, which can um, loan it out and earn interest. Okay, or public saving. Okay, Ad, which adds to the national saving and supply of loanable funds. So, kung negative siya, no, it reduces national saving and the supply of the loanable funds. Add this to illustration. So, this is the slope of the supply curve. Okay. Um, look at the x-axis. Diba? We have the loanable funds. Okay. Recall that the source of loanable funds in the supply curve is from savings. So, when you look at the interest rate, okay, pag um, nag increase ang interest rate, look at loanable funds. nag increase din when you look at the supply curve. It's because um, mag increase si interest rate, there are more savers na may enganyo to save. Thus, it will increase your loanable funds. Diba? More attractive Okay? Magsasave ako kasi malaki yung interest rate. Ganun lang yun. Um, while, when we look at the demand curve, the demand for loanable funds comes from investment. Okay? Um, firms borrow the funds they need to pay for new equipment. Um, household borrow the funds because they need purchase new houses. So, recall that the source of loanable funds for the demand curve is from investment, not from saving ha, investment. Pakamalito kayo. So, let's look at the demand curve. Look at loanable funds. Diba? Nag-increase siya. Si interest, uh, uh, nag-increase siya while si interest rate nag-ababa. Bakit ganun? Huh? With the demand curve. Okay. It's because... It comes from investment. So, meaning kung ma maliit ang interest o borrowing, maraming maiinganyo to. Diba? So, ganon ang demand curve. As you um, decrease the interest rate, the more you have the loanable funds. Okay? And where demand curve and supply curve meet, yun ang equilibrium. Okay? Ito ang ating equilibrium. So, um, the equilibrium quantity of loanable funds will be equal to the equilibrium okay, of investment and saving. Okay. So, the interest rate adjusts to equate supply and demand. So, let's look at how government policies affects um, the supply and demand okay, of loanable funds. So, let's have policy one. The saving incentive, no? What if there are more incentives when you save? Okay, what will happen to our supply curve? Okay, so kung, kung more ang, ano, ang incentives, it will increase your loanable funds. No? What will happen to our um, supply curve? It will shift, no? It will shift right side. 
because there are more loanable funds. And what will happen to our equilibrium? No? Ang equilibrium natin, ang interest rate natin would now be at 4%. Okay? So, ganon ang effect ni saving incentives. From 5%, Okay, you provided an incentive to saving, naging 4% ang interest rate. Let's look at investment incentive. No? So, what if, okay, um, the government issues policy na, sige, kung the more you invest, okay, the more you have, uh, the more incentive you can have. What will happen to our demand curve? Diba? So, si demand curve natin mag-shift din. No? Upward. Mag-move si demand curve. Okay? With investment incentive, mag-increase si interest rate at 6%. No? It will move at 6%. So, which would you refer? An interest rate? As a saver, you would want a higher interest rate. No? So, it's a good for you. It's a good thing for you, uh, investment incentive. But as a borrower, you would want the saving incentive because it shifts down the interest rate. Malit lang yung babayaran mo. Kung ganon. <laughs> so let's have here um, an activity. No? Using the loanable funds model to analyze the effects of government budget deficit. So draw down a diagram. Showing the initial equilibrium, determine the curve shape when the government runs a budget deficit, then draw a new curve on your diagram, and what happens to the equilibrium values of the interest rate and investment. Okay, so here, um, paano daw kung mayroong budget deficit? Diba ang equilibrium natin is at 5%, okay? Um, what if mayroong budget deficit? Ano ang mangyayari pala pag merong budget deficit. Let's look at budget deficit again. Ito si budget deficit, di ba? Government spending exceeds tax. So meaning, magbaba ang ating public saving. No? Mag-negative. So kung magbaba ang ating public saving, ano ang mangyayari to supply and demand curve? Okay? Um, Recall, di ba, na ang source of loanable funds for the supply curve, it's the saving. So, kung magbaba si saving, mag-shift din si supply curve. Kung mag-shift si supply curve, ano mangyayari sa ating interest rate? With the reduction of national saving, our interest rate goes up. No? It becomes 6%. So, ganun. So, an in increase in um, budget deficit okay, causes fall in investment because higher na ang iyong interest rate. You won't want to invest. So the government borrows to finance its deficit, leaving less funds um, available for investment. And they call this crowding out. Okay. So from our previous discussion, Investment from production and growth. Investment is important in the long run for economic growth. But a budget deficit, it reduces the economics, the economy's growth rate and thus also affects, no? um, it reduces the future standard of living. Okay. So, in conclusion, Financial markets are governed by the forces of supply and demand. And financial markets help allocate the economy's um, scarce resources to their most efficient use. Diba? And it enables savers to convert their current income into future purchasing power and borrowers to acquire capital to produce goods and services in the future. So in summary, we'll just run through our discussion. Um, so the financial system, it's made up of financial institution, not just the bank. We also have the stock, the bond markets, the mutual funds. National saving um, equals 
private saving plus the public saving. But in a close economy, national saving would equal to investment. And financial system makes this happen. So recall that the supply for renewable funds comes from saving and the demand for the funds comes from investment. So the interest rate, it adjusts to balance supply and demand of the loanable funds market. So the government budget deficit is negative public saving. So it reduces the national saving and the supply of funds. Okay. So when a budget deficit crowds out investment, it reduces the growth of productivity and the GDP. So that's it for our discussion on saving investment and financial system.